Welcome to the news now from the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Mike Crowley, and Lisa Gibellario of the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network is with us again today. She's also coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. So today we're talking about youth mental health and specifically suicide and suicidal ideation. It's not a comfortable topic for many people, but it's also an important one. So Lisa, welcome. And before we dive in, I just want to um, ask you to remind us about what the Youth Risk Behavior Survey is, which is the basis for the data that we have about this topic in Belmont. Thanks, Mike. So sure, the Youth Risk Behavior Survey is a survey that is administered to students in grades seven through 12, approximately every two years. And we administered that survey last spring here in Belmont. And I think the reason we're talking about this topic today is because some of the data concerning suicide and suicidal ideation was concerning. For example, in, in the middle school students, so this is grades seven and eight, 114 of them checked the box considered suicide, while 56 students in seventh or eighth grade checked the box that they had made a suicide plan. And for the high school, the numbers were also concerning. 125 students throughout grades nine through 12 indicated that they had considered suicide and 89 students checked the box, made a suicide plan. So um, Lisa, those are really concerning numbers. And you know, I, I, I would just say that any numbers are concerning, but, but these ones uh, do cause concern. So at a very basic level, what do parents um, need to know? Well, I think at the most basic level, we should say that suicide is more often than not a byproduct of mental health disorder, meaning it's not something that happens out of the blue. It doesn't often happen as a result of uh, a set of horrible circumstances like a kid getting cut from a team or a relationship ending or not getting into a college. Um, it happens because of an underlying mental health disorder. So that's important to know. Um, I would also say that mental health in general should be something that parents are talking about with their kids, checking in with their kids about. This should be a topic that comes up, you know, just the way you'd ask, how are things going at school? How are things with the friend group? And how are you feeling emotionally? You know, are you experiencing any prolonged sadness or any anxiety? So I would say that talking about it is really important. And then Parents need to be aware of what some of the red flags are around mental health, um, which I just alluded to. So prolonged periods of social isolation, of anger, of sadness, of withdrawing. This can be a sign of a mental health disorder. So I would say that if your child has a marked change in their behavior, if they're not seeing friends, if they quit activities, if they're spending long, long periods of time alone in their room, if their sleep habits have changed, eating habits, you need to check in and you might want to get professional help. Lisa, let me, let me ask you about self-harm. Is, is that a risk? Uh, it, is, it is not a risk necessarily for suicide, Mike, but it is a sign of emotional distress. Um, so self-harm meaning if, if, if a child pinches themselves, uh, is cutting themselves, burning themselves, it's a coping mechanism, but not a healthy one. So I would say it's a sign that a child may need some professional help. So if a, if a child has been struggling with mental health issues and given the data that you've cited, Lisa, should parents be asking their kids about suicide and whether it's something that they're thinking about? Yes, and it's a really difficult place to start the conversation. So hopefully conversations around mental health have been ongoing, but yes, if your child seems to be struggling a lot and as those signs we just talked about um, are really evident then the experts say it is absolutely appropriate to check in as calmly uh, and as matter of factly as you can so if, if you're seeing your child really struggling you might want to say you seem really really down lately are you considering suicide um, and if they answer anything that isn't no um, that 
that you know will warrant more help. But if they do answer something that's in the middle, you may need to ask the follow-up question, which is, do you have a suicide plan? And again, if the answer isn't an unequivocal no, then you may want to certainly consider professional help. So Lisa, if 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 kids answer yes to either question and you know um, beyond yes, if 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 parents um, aren't getting an unequivocal no, should parents at that point reach out for professional help? Sure. Uh, yeah, it, it's not easy to do right now, Mike. So so it is a bit of a challenge. But I would say first and foremost, contact your insurance company. See if they have a list of providers. Um, also con contact the pediatrician of your children and see if they have a list of providers. I would let the school know there are um, new social workers on staff at both the middle school and the high school, and they should know what's going on. And of course, if there's any imminent danger, if there's, if you're, if there's a crisis, if a child's, um, you know, if anything is at risk and, and, and scary happening at home, you need to call 911 and let them know that this is a mental health crisis. So the answer to your question is yes, professional help is definitely warranted. And, you know, mental health disorders are treatable and with treatment, people do feel better. So it's important to get that treatment. All right, thank you so much, Lisa. Suicide is an uncomfortable topic, but one that we definitely need to keep talking about. So thank you again, and we'll see you next time.